All right, guys, today we are going to be talking about something that I think is going to maybe cause a little bit of a stir, especially because here of late, I've had a lot of people who have been in the comment section of my previous videos on the ubiquitous Gerber LMF2, and they have been telling me that I'm absolutely wrong about this knife, that this is a very solid knife. Many people have carried these on multiple deployments, and while I definitely thank people for their service, I don't happen to prefer the knife that is either standard issue that they go to um, AFES or the PX or the BX and purchase this knife. Now, do I think it is a knife you can carry into deployments in military environments and use? Honestly, yes, because I think most times from my understanding of military knife use, they are essentially sharpened pry bars, and that is what this knife here is. However, I cannot recommend this as an actual, honest to God, wilderness survival tool. So in this video, we are going to be strictly evaluating the <clears throat> Gerber LMF2 infantry knife as it relates to other knives on the market when it comes to wilderness and field use. So this could be general applications of things such as processing game animals. This could be starting fires, batoning pieces of wood open to get access to dry, usable firewood to start fires, to build shelters, to do many different multiple or multidisciplinary actions out in the wilderness. So, that is essentially how I'm going to be looking at this tool and treating it. So first off, we should start off with the Gerber LMF2. What is this knife? And I think what kind of makes this knife at least semi-desirable for wilderness application. So first off, I would say the big thing that I think makes this knife the most um, useful or at least most desirable in wilderness use is the fully rubberized slash plasticized handle. Now, unfortunately, the way Gerber went about making this handle, I think that it was very poorly constructed because essentially it is a clamshelled piece of plastic with rubber over it. And unfortunately, the hard plastic um, clamshell has a tendency to break as this one has here and there are multiple YouTube videos documenting this as well so if you accidentally strike the finger guard here or the top guard you can very easily crack it and uh, yeah so that is unfortunate and of course once you crack the clamshell plastic the rubber starts to peel away as you guys can see here in addition to this um, piece of metal here this pommel is not a part of or integral to the tang of the knife and so this is very prone to becoming or rattling loose which is an unfortunate issue now other things that do make this knife at least semi admirable is it has a decent sized blade length and a decent sized thickness and you can strike ferro rods off the spine it is not necessarily the sharpest spine to do that with but it is usable in addition to this two ridiculous things of this knife i really hate how essentially 60 percent of the blade is serrated this is good for some applications but by and large for the most part this is not a very good um, use of blade especially when you consider that this knife comes with the sharpener in are on the sheath in on built into the sheath i think um, and this is a pull through sharpener which is probably one of the worst types of sharpeners but for a field sharpener especially that is only going to work on the non serrated part of this blade you cannot make a pull through sharpener work on serrations without obliterating them so i think that is a critical oversight of the design and ethos of this knife as a package or unit in addition to this two other weird designs is that you have essentially a three lugged um, lashing or lanyard hole system that is designed to give you the ability to lash this to a stick and make it into a spear. If you do that in any survival application, you are an idiot. Don't do that. That is completely and utterly misaligned with reality. In addition to this too, the 420HC is not very good with edge retention. It is not the worst. It Honestly, 420HC, especially properly heat treated, can prove well, but in order to get peak performance out of 420 high carbon, you do need to heat treat it to about 60 to 62 HRC, which I can guarantee this is probably HRC anywhere from 56 to 58. 
So this is going to be running below or softer. So you are not going to be getting peak edge performance out of this. So keep that in mind for what it's worth. In addition to my blade personally has not really seen much hard use and has not seen anything but wood, but does present with multiple ripples and chips in the very cutting edge. This thing does not honestly cut that well anymore. Out of box was okay, but uh, it would definitely need to be resharpened. So that is an overlook at the uh, Gerber LMF2 inventory. Now let's talk about some competitive offerings. So starting off strong, one of the largest physical competitive offerings here is going to be the Ontario Knife Company RAT. Two. Now this is made in 1075 high carbon nowadays, um, depending on how the new ownership of Ontario Knife Co. goes, it may be bumped back to 1095, but even in 1075, this is a pretty valiant offering. You are dealing with, of course, a seven inch blade as the name implies with RAT7, dealing with canvas micarta handles, of course, a full tang knife, and in my opinion, a very admirable knife for around the same price as the LMF2. Now, like I said, this is a physically bigger knife than the LMF2, as you can see there, but they are about the same price. I think the uh, OKC RAT2 here is, or sorry, RAT7 is actually um, cheaper than the LMF2, but if it's not, it's around the same price. Once again, you're dealing with a full tang, round 532 uh, inch thick piece of 1075 high carbon. So you're gonna have decent edge retention, really good shock resistance, and overall a pretty darn good blade. And once again, it's not going to be the best thing, but for the price point, I think it is going to perform very admirable. Now, another one that is, once again, similar in price point, a little bit closer to the overall size of the LMF2 is going to be the Topps Fieldcraft. The Topps Fieldcraft is made of 1095, differentially heat treated. Um, this one is going to provide fantastic edge retention and also fantastic shock resistance because of the differential heat treat. So that means your spine and the core of the blade is going to be softer while as or whereas the edge itself is actually going to be harder to improve edge retention. And Topps does a fantastic job with their knives, and so I have absolutely no complaints. This is my field craft. It's seen years, darn near a decade of use, and it is still holding up very well. All right, now let's get into some more direct competitors. These are gonna be knives that are honestly very similar to the ethos of the LMF2. So the first one up is going to be the Cold Steel Master Hunter. So first off, the Cold Steel Master Hunter negates this weird pommel thing. If you take that away from it, they are very similar in blade length and in handle length. In addition to this too, the Master Hunter is fully rubberized or has a fully rubberized handle. Now, unlike the LMF2, there is no plastic um, clamshell underneath this rubber. This is full rubber. And so it isn't going to break or crack or have anything like that. Things like this finger guard are pliable, as you can see here, due to the nature of this being fully rubberized, but it is still pretty stiff, so you're not really gonna have to worry about that. In addition to that too, one of the biggest advantages to the Master Hunter is that knives like this um, come in CPM 3V, or this model in particular, I should say, is CPM 3V. So you are getting a massive leap in edge retention, in toughness, even in some, to some degree, corrosion resistance, going with CPM 3V. And what makes this even sweeter is that the, not only is the blade um, material superior, this is also a cheaper knife. I got this knife for $89 as opposed to the $120 of the LMF2. So we're talking near $30 cheaper and a knife that is better in every aspect. All right, next one up is going to be the Valiant and probably one of the best competitors here for the price because um, I think this is the cheapest one on the list. This is the Mora Garberg. Now, once again, this one is 1095 high carbon, very similar in performance to the Fieldcraft, but this one has a fully plastic handle, so not quite rubberized or grippy, but it is going to be very strong, very shock resistant. This is not a two-piece clamshell, so if you have any accidental overstrikes, it's not going to break this plastic molded handle. In addition to, you are dealing with a true full tang blade. So you can see the tang there sticking out. Unlike the LMF2, it doesn't have a full tang. Um, this one, it does. So once again, this 
one also has a full DLC coating, so it is going to be, even though it's a high carbon, so it's not as rust resistant as the 420HC, it is going to have a very durable coating that should protect the blade from any type of rust. So I think the Garberg's very valiant. It is the smallest knife on this list. So you guys, you guys can see here, not only is it smaller in blade length, but also blade width. However, once again, I kind of take that with a grain of salt because when you're dealing with so much of a serrated edge, as you guys can see here, realistically, you know, when we're talking straight edge to straight edge, the Garberg does have more straight edge, more usable, tenable blade. So once again, I might be slightly biased against serrations, but in my opinion, my opinion, even the shorter blade length of the Garberg will still probably outperform the full blade of the LMF2 outside of, or pretty much the only thing that this one's better at, or the LMF2 is better at, is batoning. So, anyways, last up, and I would say probably the closest direct competitor that I have um, in my collection to the LMF2 is the Demco Free Rain. Now, first off, the Demco Free Rain is already a better knife, one, because it does use superior materials, superior craftsmanship, but also two, this one can come in Magna Cut. Now, this is the OS 10A version, and I would still argue OS 10A is superior in performance stainlessness and all of those such features as opposed to 420 hc so you know take that for what it's worth but the magna cut versions of these do not change the price like they're not more expensive but they also offer even better edge retention even better corrosion resistance even better toughness than os 10a and certainly better than 420 hc now, once again, you are dealing with a full tang blade, as you guys can see the pommel sticking out there, or the tang sticking out there at the end. These are fully rubberized, once again, just like your Gerber LMF2. And you are also dealing with a similar, though better grind on the Demco. This is a high saber grind, whereas this is a lower flat slash saber grind here. So you're gonna be getting a little bit better edge performance on the Demco free rein. In addition to you, in addition to this too, you also don't have any weird top guard, so it's going to be nice to really get onto that spine. As well, similar to the Master Hunter and the Garberg, this is one piece of um, rubberized plastic, so you are not going to have any you know, weird plastic under this that can crack or break. Um, this is one solid unit of rubber, so it is going to be not only very grippy, but also it is going to be very tough, very resistant. And what I love about rubber, similar to the Master Hunter is if you do have an overstrike, you strike this handle. Um, because it's solely rubber, it's not going to crack, it's not gonna break, it's going to move, it's gonna bend if you hit it, but it's not going to crack or peel or get damaged. So a really tough, really resistant handle material, and it has a very positive grip to it. Now once again, very similar blade lengths here, even notwithstanding the serrations, um, you have very similar blade lengths, very similar handle lengths. Um, so overall, a very, very similar competitor, but it is, once again, in my opinion, superior to the LMF2. And once again, it is also about $120. So you're gonna be looking at about the same price as the Gerber LMF2, but for something that is vastly better. I think it's also worth noting too, we previously mentioned the LMF2's um, sheath and this is a its sheath it's not fantastic it's not honestly the worst but you know we're talking about we talked about some of the free rain very similar it is an ambidextrous sheath you can put it in either direction you have multiple mounting options you have pretty similar overall build the only difference is with the demco it um, negates that whole dumb kind of pull through sharpener that is primarily a gimmick anyways so anyways guys that has been a look at five knives i think Think are superior to the Gerber LMF2. If you guys feel I'm wrong, let me know in the comment section below. If you guys feel like I missed a knife, let me know in the comment section below what knives I missed. There are honestly a lot of solid choices, especially in this price range. I could definitely see something like the SC6 or the SC5 being on this list. Other ones that I would feel would be a little bit more expensive, but also in this range would be things such as the Falkneven S1. Um, that would be another really good competitor, but those are ones that I could have added to this list, but I feel like these are all pretty core um, knives that are either as expensive as the LMF2 or cheaper. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.